It's so long, but let's play this part at the end. Alrighty. Ladies and gentlemen, this is a recap of Composing in Motion, Part 57, Poise. In today's episode, some of our reflections as we got to work, we hunkered down, we buckled down um, on these cadence groups. Uh, we've learned to appreciate the ambivalent chunking, which is what we did here. We had uh, 18 or so groupings, and then we have parsed them into these separate, 72 separate little sequences. And this is a new technique. We've done this twice before with kind of big gaps in between. This is the third time. The upside is it generates a lot of material, as you just saw way down here to 370 bars. Uh, the downside is very labor intensive at the beginning, but that's true of other techniques when we keep generating chords and we've gotten better and faster at that. So hopefully we'll get better and faster at this third time around. Uh, as you may have heard, we also are starting to use some fermatas in here. So what we did is we took this cadence grouping that we had in the last stream and instead of using uh, Caesura pause marks, we're actually breaking it apart by um, bars, buffer bars, and identified and labeled cadences. And then we've started to add a backbone. So we're going to, you just heard us play the ending backbone, then we're going to play the beginning backbone, and that'll bring us home. So here we go. And that's it. Doesn't sound like a lot, but it sure took a lot of time to get there. Uh, the new thing we're doing is using a fermata, which this says basically make it take three times as long to last. We could have made this three bars long, but we don't want to do that yet. These are these are pe building pieces that we're creating that we're going to we think assemble into a separate score in a in a different new order. But we got to get we got it. We got the cadence down. Now we're getting the backbone down, and then and then we go from there. So what we do like about it is, as we said earlier, we seem to be getting better at it, including picking out notes. In fact, if you just want to listen, if you only listen to the melody, it's not bad. And then it's got a little bit of variation, and then back here. And we know from our experience working with this that once you've got the the core structure of backbone and canes and polyphone, then you can add um, ornamentation and all kinds of different layers and voicings that'll give it more of a something besides everything in the same octave. Because right now it's pretty much all in the same octave by design. But we know we want to get all the way down to here and all the way up to here. So. We have a long row to hoe. So that concludes today's stream. Our ideas for next time is to keep at it. Keep working with the hexatonic note function cadence groupings. You have 54 more of these backbones to add. A shout out to XYFS who came and visited. And we appreciate it. So tune in next time to see what happens next. Do take care. Do come back and do keep on streaming.